My name is Jason and I'm 16 and I'm Jewish and I live in Vacaville, California. And I've been going to Chabad since its founding here in Vacaville. In 2017, my uh, aunt was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer and it was found late. It was a big shock to the family since uh, she's always been outgoing, the nicest person, warming, just... It's hard to imagine that somebody you know so dearly and care about is gonna be diagnosed with cancer. So um, it was hard for a while and it took a lot of getting used to her going to cancer treatment, seeing her hair fall off her head. It was uh, just a little bag I carried on my back of knowing that my aunt was most likely going to die from cancer. But um, as the year progressed, um, my family heard about a Jewish camp in uh, New York that they wanted to send me to called Camp Lamanachai. I have, wasn't raised super religious, but um, my parents wanted me to, to send me there to get a little bit of a background in Judaism and uh, meet more Jews since there's not really many here. And so going, I had a great time and I kind of left. It was always in the back of my mind that my aunt back home was uh, living her last days, but I tried to have a good time while I was there. So one night, um, my counselor asked me if I want to write to the Rebbe. And I hadn't really known so much about the Rebbe before I came, but I learned a lot there. And uh, people there had looked up to him. So um, of course I said, yes, I mean, what could hurt? So I wrote a letter to the Rebbe, and in it, I asked that my aunt should have speedy recovery. Um, among other things, I asked for uh, peace in the world, as any 13-year-old would do, and um, just stuff like that. And it didn't really cross over me as to like the significance of it yet. When you write a letter to the Rebbe, you always leave with a promise that you're going to do something good. So I left with uh, the promise that I would say Shema, the Jewish prayer, every night before I went to sleep. Days passed and weeks went on and camp ended. And when I got home, I came back to the, to the reality that I thought would be the reality of my aunt still living her last days on cancer. And I um, got home, saw my parents, my sister, my family and everything. And my mom told me the great news that my aunt was cancer free. And of course, I'm like, this is, this is a joke. Is this something trying to trick me? But it was true. So looking back on the story, the day that I went out with my counselor was Thursday of uh, the second week of camp. And my aunt had a checkup for her cancer um, the Saturday of that same week. It was basically just to see how long she had to live. It wasn't really a check to see how much progression or anything. It was just to see her lifespan. And when she went in, it was just like any other checkup. But the doctors, after screening her, looked confused and asked her for another one. And on the second screening, they were all, soon there were doctors all from all over in the room, crowding. And my aunt and my uncle were very confused as to what was happening. They told her, you have no cancer, we can't find it. It's not showing up in screenings. Um, we don't know where it went or what happened to it, but you don't have cancer. It was a shock and um, a miracle that it happened. And I still say Shema every night. Uh, as I said, I would in the letter three years later. That same year, we went on a huge trip. It was a huge um, bucket list uh, that my, my aunt wanted to do. And one of them was go to Israel. So that same year we went to Israel, we went on a big trip with my family, and uh, since then I still see my aunt every, every once in a while. I still try and call her and I go and see her, and um, she has a full head of hair now and uh, is living very happily.